Right, so the rail negotiations between Network Rail and the RMT have failed once again. Such, it seems, is the determination for the government to pull Network Rail strings. They have a stake in our railways and are not some kind of bystander in this dispute to bend over backwards and ensure ordinary working class people are prevented from having enough to live on. From rail workers here to Tories like Nadim Zahawi taking us all for fools by saying nurses should give up asking for a pay rise to fight Putin. That NHS staff strikes are helping Putin. Putin? Was them only getting 3% last year helping Putin too? Putin's biggest problem this week, aside from still getting his arse kicked all over Ukraine right now, was falling down the stairs and soiling himself apparently. Is that thanks to our nurses getting another real terms pay cut? Implying asking for enough to live on as unpatriotic is as insulting as it is dishonest. And of course, there is strike action happening across the board right now. Royal Mail, the Fire Brigade Union is balancing sixth form teachers, staff at the DWP, the Met Office, paramedics and more. All because inflation is skyrocketing. Their pay won't keep up. They can't cover the bills. They need more pay. This has been a ticking time bomb issue for over a decade now. And it's coming to a head at a time when we're feeling the pinch harder than ever. Why do we work if not to be able to live? If working means we're not meeting the cost of that, then the social contract is broken. But anyway, back to the RMT. And this is important because the government are using the RMT arguably as the biggest scapegoat right now to try and turn public opinion against the strike action many industries are being forced into. Here's Mick Lynch spelling out the latest. The RMT union today has decided to put a new offer from Network Rail Two members in an electronic referendum with a recommendation to reject the proposals from Network Rail. And that referendum will close on Monday, December the 12th at noon, 12 o'clock. All the strike action that we've got planned in December, that's 13, 14, uh, and so on, will go ahead um, as planned, uh, as will the action in January. Um, but in addition to that, further, we've also put further strike action that will take place and all, all members will be instructed not to book on from 1800 hours on December the 24th until 6 o'clock in the morning on December the 27th. This new phase of strike action coincides with the wind down of the passenger service on the National Rail Network and coincides with the commencement of the engineering work scheduled for that period. The overtime ban that had previously been scheduled has been cancelled on Network Rail because of this new strike action. In regard to the train operating companies, there's been no improved offer from the Rail Delivery Group. And the reason for that is because they have had no mandate from the government. The government has not allowed any new offer to be put to us today. And there is a meeting scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, planned in and we'll see if the rail delivery group on behalf of the train operating companies the passenger service uh, has got uh, a mandate to make us an offer so at the minute we haven't got anything that's acceptable to us uh, and we feel that we've been compelled to take this action because of the intransigence of the government delivered to us by the employers uh, on the government's behalf and that we've got no choice because what we've been faced with is an extremely detrimental offer. It's very poor in relation to the pay elements and our members simply aren't in the position of the feedback that we've had to accept the changes that the companies have put on the table. So the action will go ahead. There will be more action uh, during the close down period on the railway over Christmas and all the other scheduled action in the new year is going ahead. There's a number of points it's really important to pick up on there to refute some of the media narratives going around over this. Firstly, the New Deal, which I'll go into in a moment so you can see if you'd accept it, is being put to a referendum of RMT members via electronic voting to reject the deal. They've been on strike for a while now. Members have lost significant wages whilst they've been on strike. And this is why Network Rail and the government, who basically dictate to them what they can and cannot negotiate, they set the mandate. Network Rail can go in and negotiate with, as Mick Lynch also spoke out on there. And because of that, they are dragging this out instead of reaching a meaningful settlement. People can and do get worn down struggling to make ends meet where they're losing money. Perversely, Network Rail are losing no money because they're indemnified. In other words, any losses they are making, the government are covering. So the same government telling RMT workers via their puppets at Network Rail that they're not worth a pay rise to match inflation are paying their employers whatever they're losing, no matter how much that is. 
The government are actively undermining negotiations in their bias, in their taking the side of the bosses, thus ensuring they don't lose any money whilst also setting the terms for the negotiations with the RMT. This is absolutely a Tory engineered dispute. They could end it overnight. This is even worse when you think that's our money being wasted on those running the service, particularly when that's money that could be used on one hand to pay proper wages here, but for two, could just as easily be used to renationalize the lot. By balloting their members in a referendum, the RMT are asking them, do you want us to continue? Because we know that you're hurting. It's showing consideration to their members. It's not Mick Lynch and co holding the country to ransom when the members' wishes come first and foremost. All strike action planned thus far for December and January is set to go ahead as planned, along with strike action now covering from 6pm on the 24th through to 6am on the 27th of December, covering the Christmas period. Lynch was very careful to state what this coincides with. The wind down of the passenger service on the network. So after the majority of people will have travelled for Christmas and restoring the service for when most will return. And of course, making that announcement now means people can plan around that. It also coincides with engineering works, which should now be delayed. The whole point of strike action is to cause inconvenience, but they are minimising that to passengers as far as they possibly can. Mick Lynch has described the current offer as very poor and detrimental, so let's take a look at it and bear in mind this is what the RMT are holding a referendum over for their members to consider, thinking about the ongoing hardship that they're enduring. See if you would accept this in your job. The RDG proposals, that's the rail delivery group, so network rail basically in this instance, but the RDG also involves the train companies themselves, sets out a two-year pay package of 4% in 2022 and 2023, with a no compulsory guarantee only until April 2024. So when you hear about the RMT getting offered 8% in the news, bear in mind it is split over two years. So a 4% pay rise when inflation is currently at 11%, so a realtor's pay cut this year of 7%, during a cost of living crisis. And if inflation falls below 4% by next year, I'll eat this padded jacket. So almost certainly another real terms pay cut next year. The 2024 offer is on compulsory redundancies, not canceling them, just delaying them for a bit. The rest of the list here is all stuff the media are omitting to cover. I'll just pick up a few of these points. No more industrial action, cutting their own arms off going forwards for the next two years in effect. Ticket office closures again, a mass job severance program. So that 2024 layoff date looks like it'll be used for significant numbers of staff. Drivers only operation of trains in companies and on all services. So bye bye to the guards again with all the safety concerns we've heard before when they've tried this and the detrimental effect this would have on passenger safety, particularly disabled passengers no longer with assistance to get on or off. And indeed, if something were to happen to the driver, that they become somehow incapacitated, what then? A train crash is going to be acceptable now because who will stop the train? I remember Potter's Bar. It's 20 years this year since that horrendous train crash where seven people died. And although that was down to faulty points, such things don't bear thinking about, let alone being engineered to happen by network rail, making the service less safe. Fewer staff makes for a more unsafe service. It really is that simple. Adoption of new tech, but no pay increase for upskilling to use it. Mandatory Sunday working hours for no extra pay, new arrangements concerning sick pay and annual leave, which, if the rest of this is anything to go by, will be detrimental too. So go on, tell me, would you accept such an offer? The majority of the public still back those striking. They get it. More eyes are opened right now as more and more strike action is being observed, and the cases for it are being set out by some very bright, very eloquent representatives. But Mick Lynch and the RMT have become the focal point of all of this. If the government can beat them, they figure the rest will fall into line too. So we absolutely need to back the rail workers here. Solidarity across all industries taking action. They are not interfering in train services. Most of their members of the RMT are not train drivers. Most are on much lower wages. The ticket office staff, the engineers, the retail workers, the cleaners. And the Christmas strikes are primarily aimed at hitting engineering works instead. It's poorer pay terms and conditions on offer with more strings attached to it than a harp, as the person who runs the RMT Twitter account put it, someone becoming well known for their wit and worth a follow if only to watch them bodying their critics. But this is serious. The government and network rail are not being serious. And this government aversion to paying people enough to live on really should be questioned more heavily by more people. Why do they insist on keeping us poor and working just to earn our own poverty?